Holy smokes, folks. <laughs> we are infested and mama's got bugs. If you've been following along on our journey, you saw that we had a nice crop of greens growing all through the winter here in the greenhouse. And that was pretty cool. But then when spring rolled around, we saw that the lettuce was starting to look sickly. All of our lettuce crop was going downhill. Well, upon closer inspection, we realized we had a major infestation of aphids here in the greenhouse. This <laughs> pot of daisies. It is just full of aphids here. All those little bumps are aphids. I'm not happy about that. I'm spraying an insecticidal soap on the flowers, but we're going to use other tactics for the food we're going to eat fresh. Ladybugs. <laughs> oh. I'm going to get them away from where I'm going to be cutting. It's the first time in my life I ever bought bugs. Let them go all over the place for now. Get the aphids. Ladyboogers. Go find the aphids. We were okay with the soapy spray on the flowers and stuff, but kind of turned off about putting that on the food that we're going to eat. So we've always known the ladybugs are beneficial for the garden. They love to eat aphids. So we ordered 3,000 of the little buggers and let them go in here. And it was pretty cool. You'd come in here and the ladybugs are flying around. And it was like a summer day when there's snow on the ground outside. So that was really cool to observe. They'd be crawling all over the plants and hunting down the aphids. It was really cool. But then they just started to disappear. And what was taking place in here was they had already laid a bunch of eggs all over the plants. And then the mature adults had died off. And now we have a new batch of ladybugs being born. And it's just kind of cool to have all of that going on in our little greenhouse here. Yeah. And little pine trees and little red oaks that we're growing from seed. I'll show you. So I have six little pine trees and four oaks. And we're growing everything from seed. These are doing really good. They've grown a lot just in the last week. Little pine trees are a lot slower out of the gate. They'll stay a little puffball about that tall for a while. And then the following year they'll be shooting up. But yeah, yeah, aren't they cute? <laughs> yeah, these are looking good, growing quick. It's really cool to start a tree from seed. Start it in a pot, take care of it, you know, nurture it. Then you take it out into the wild and plant it. And then you go visit it year after year and watch it grow up. It's really cool. And I personally don't know anyone that does that. Hmm. And whenever I show footage of us cutting trees, like lately there's been quite a bit of it, I'll always get a handful of comments from people that are attempting to throw us ridicule in regards to all of the trees that we're killing. Why are we killing so many trees? Or we shouldn't kill so many trees. And I used to hear the same type of comments whenever I would share any hunting footage. You know, we live in the woods and I'd go out in the woods in the fall and harvest a couple of deer for the freezer. And people would ridicule for killing things. And, Tell me I should just go to the grocery store like everybody else. 
with the obviously with the mindset that if it comes on a styrofoam plate with cellophane over the top that the animals weren't harmed in some magical way. That always did crack me up. The mindset, you know. Um, a lot of times when people are making comments like that, they really are oblivious to what's going on in nature. They just don't have a clue. They're just throwing their two cents in anyway. But in regards to the trees, just because you cut a tree down doesn't always mean you're killing the tree, as most species will regrow off of the stump. It's like when we're in here in the greenhouse and cutting the Swiss chard, it regrows and it'll continue to do so. If you walk around the forest where we are going to be building a house, if you walk around that forest, you will see all over the place trees growing in a circular pattern. There might be six to ten trees growing in a circular pattern because that property was logged many years ago. And if the hardwoods are left alone, those stumps are left alone, new growth will grow off of that stump. It'll be all these suckers. And if the suckers are left alone, over time, the majority of those will turn into full-grown trees and they'll be growing in a circular pattern. It's the same thing here in the yard. I had some maples that were unhealthy and another one was threatening the camp. I cut those down. I left the stumps in the ground and they are regrowing new maple trees now. And a few years ago I cut that maple down because it was up and leaning right on the camp here which wasn't good. So I took the tree down and then it sprung up with new life and I cut all the other suckers away and I'm letting this tree grow back up in its place and it's already just about six foot tall. And as the stump decomposes it will feed that new tree. Okay. You know, the pines and the spruce don't regrow off of the stump but whatever softwoods that we are taking down, we will utilize and it will mean a lot to us to harvest that timber there on the spot, turn it into lumber and use that in our structure. So those trees just don't die in vain and they certainly don't go to waste. We will utilize it. It's the same with when I go hunting. You know, you go with the mindset, you don't take more than you need, and you utilize all that you take, and you always give back. When I was hunting on my farm in New York, I'd take a couple of deer, two or three deer off of it, and then I would lock up that property. I don't let anybody on it. I would provide refuge for the wildlife. So if deer are getting pressured on their surrounding properties, they could run over to my land and be protected, and they had a safe haven. And that was my way of giving back. So it's much in the same here, right? planting all these trees. And this is just tip of the iceberg. There's going to be a lot more of this. So, <laughs> you know, I, I can't help but wonder about all these people that are so quick to offer up their two cents and try to ridicule, for someone, ridicule someone for something that they don't really even know what they're talking about. I wonder... How much property, how much refuge do they provide for wildlife? How many birdhouses do they build? How much money do they spend on bird seed? How many trees do they plant? I, can, I bet you it's minimal or none at all. <laughs> Just the way it is, I guess. We haven't finished cutting the trees yet and she's already planting flowers. <laughs> Look at her go. Roots and rocks is what you hit when you're yeah. digging in the woods. We'll cut that stump down flush and probably put a pole up with a birdhouse on it. And put some flowers in the bank here. Looking good, Mama. Yeah, that's the last clump of the lilies. Yeah. And we got those other things to get planted. Yep. Once those spread out, they'll be good. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like this whole area to just 
fill in with them. You know, probably like in a year or two, we'll break some of these up and plant them over yeah. further. Yeah. Yep. Spread out. Those flowers that Laurie is planting, they're special daylilies. There's a lot of history behind them. So let me explain. Last week I was showing you a trailer load of metal roofing that I had gotten from my sister and her husband. And when we were there visiting, my sister gave us all of these daylilies. And what's special about them is they came from the house that we grew up in. Uh, when I was growing up, my parents had flower gardens in the yard and my sister had dug some of those up and she has grown them at her homes throughout the years. So now we are going to be planting some of those here at our new home site. And a couple weeks back I said that this would probably be the last home that I ever build. I don't foresee living in any other places after this. I think this will be my last home on earth. So I'm taking flowers from the place that I was born, from the first home I've ever lived in, and be growing the same family of flowers from the same roots here in my last home. I am bringing my roots with me. I just feel that's really cool. Yeah, I'm very nostalgic anyway, which you folks know if you followed my channel for a while. You know, um, a while ago I did that series, Back to My Roots, when I had decided to leave New York and come back home and fix up the old camp where we are living now. And if you haven't seen that series, I recommend it because it's my favorite videos I've ever made. I put a lot of heart and soul into them. They're very thought provoking and entertaining. It's a good series. And that was before YouTube was placing copyright claims on everything and dampening my creativity. Yeah, I'll put a link to that playlist in the description below if you care to view it. And I recommend it though. It's good stuff. Yeah, so back to my roots. And I'm bringing my roots with me. I just love it. I just think it's really cool. <laughs> Frankie and the boss out walking in the woods Living life happy and free Tracks in the snow everywhere they go There's a pokey way up in that tree A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss